Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me in this podcast episode. Really appreciate it. How are you today? I'm very good. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. I'm super excited to learning more about you and also the topic we have in our hand, like how YouTube and blogging, we can utilize it and for grow our business. So before that, I'd love to know more about yourself, how your journey started as an entrepreneur. How did you come across with the business? Sure, sure. So I worked in the UK business to business telecommunication and utility industry from 2002 to 2019. And during that time, I helped grow a company from being a small third party sales company on behalf of someone else mm -hmm. to being one of the UK's largest independent B2B uh, providers of things like telephones, mobiles, gas, electricity. And in that time, I did things like I created mobile uh, virtual networks. So we did three of those. We did a virtual electricity network. We then moved into a real electricity company um, and uh, the company grew and grew and grew. And then I exited due to a restructure that was taking place. These things happen. They, they like to shuffle out people who've helped build the place and bring in new people. Yeah. And during that time, I had taken an interest outside of work in things like uh, YouTube and blogging. And I wanted to learn about WordPress. Um, and so I'd started a little bit of a side hobby of doing product reviews on YouTube. And I started to learn a lot more about how you put videos together. And then I had a supporting website that was, that was done on WordPress, so I could learn that. And when I left the business, I realized that um, I was going to take some time out and just focus on developing that, doing some more training. I thought, well, maybe I'll look for something in the new year. And this was yeah. 2019, and of course, 2020, the new year came. And so did a global pandemic. Yeah, and I realized that the safest place for me to be at that moment in time was working from home. And so I threw everything I, everything I had into that. And so for the last few years, I've been continuing with my blogging, my YouTubing. I make videos for Amazon.com, the American version of the site. And I uh, currently help uh, coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs create products um, and come up with really clear messaging mm. and the new thing that I've just been trialing with a very few small number of people. I'm just looking to roll that out later this year called the growth jetpack. And so if people are looking to launch courses or launch a new product, this will help get clarification on exactly what that is. So it's pulling together my knowledge, not only from business, but also from blogging and YouTube and uh, a load of courses and books I've been reading in the last few years. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing. So it's been a great journey for you had in past uh, few decades. So right now, like everything is online, all businesses and everything, but branding is the most important part of the building a kind of businesses you have. Like anyone can start a business right now online, but not many people are successful at it because of they don't have the branding and following. Right now, if someone wants to buy, even though for like Amazon product, they're going to go on TikTok or YouTube searching for the review for the product. How does it look like? How is it going to bring any value in it? So how any kind of businesses or online businesses can utilize like a YouTube or blogging? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. I found that YouTube blogging and creating courses or products the, the initial stages are all quite slim, similar because the first thing you have to do is consider what, what it is you're providing. So in most part, uh, especially for business, it's some sort of transformation, isn't it? That the customer is at point A and you can help them get to point B. And that might be with a coaching uh, course. It might be with a, a, an actual product. The product helps unblock a drain. If point A is block drain, point B, it's unblocked. Mm -hmm. So as well as knowing what, what it is you're offering, you need to know who you're targeting. Again, this, this works not just for business, but for YouTube and blogging as well, because if you know your ideal viewer, client, persona, whatever you want to call them, then you start to understand what sort of content it is that they'd be interested in watching or reading um, or viewing, whatever, whatever the method is. And I think what's really interesting, YouTube moved this way a long time ago, which was putting the viewer first. So it rewards channels that engage with viewers and, and keep viewers engaged. They're making content for the viewers and not just because they think that keywords are a thing on YouTube, which I, I don't think they ever really have been for a long time now. Yeah. And we've seen this year, Google have, uh, Google obviously, uh, their parent company owns YouTube as well. And they're, they're taking that philosophy into search and they now want people to be writing 
people first content. So rather than trying to stuff in things like keywords and mention certain words so many times, or whatever, what they actually want people to, to do is write for your ideal persona, what they want to read, helping them understand topics, answering questions. Um, and that's how you'll get traffic. And, and I work with a, a property investor who had a blog and it just been sat there for 10 years. They had some like 2000 posts on the blog and she'd been hiring someone who was just knocking out top 10 this top 10 that yeah and we did a review recently and then since april last year i've been coming up with topics and we've been co-writing things and her top 100 traffic driving blog posts have been completely replaced she's had 2000 posts on there for the last whatever five ten years and none of them can be the, the newer stuff that we're writing now which has been written with a specific person in mind Right. So across all these different things, the main thread is come up with who it is you want to uh, attract as, as in your ideal client, your ideal viewer, your ideal reader. Think about what they want and give it to them. Yeah. And that's pretty much universal in business, blogging and YouTube. Yeah, interesting. So right now, like there is so many YouTube channels, there is so many blogs out there. Do you think is there a right time to start a, like a blog or YouTube channel? Is there still room for like a new content going there? Well, certainly on YouTube. So three years ago, I convinced a friend of mine to partner up with me to launch a Pilates channel. So I'm, I, although I now do a little bit of Pilates, she's a, a qualified instructor. Right. And so I had the YouTube and the technical knowledge, and she obviously had the, the Pilates knowledge. And it can be something that doesn't necessarily give you quick results. So the first year we were getting set up, she had to learn how to, to do YouTube. It actually came in very handy because when the pandemic hit, she had to transfer her business to video. Yeah. And so she was all set up, which was bonus. And then at the start of uh, last year, all of a sudden we went from a few hundred subscribers and it jumped up to uh, about 1,000, 2,000 subscribers in January as people were starting to find her content. And then this year... Back end of December, we're at about 5,000 subscribers, and we've just passed, I think it's 25,000 subscribers. So we've added 20,000 subscribers in January. So that's still a relatively new channel. It's still a relatively small channel, but it shows that if you are making the right kind of content, once YouTube learns who likes your videos, and that's the part that can take a while um, because it's quite a trickle, all of a sudden it can become a flood because when it understands that Person A watches this video and this video and they like it. Person B likes the same kind of stuff. Let's show them your videos. Yeah. All of a sudden, you'll be getting loads of viewers. Now, three years might sound like a long time. It can be done much sooner than that if you're really going for it and really focused in on what your ideal persona wants. Mm. Um, but I think in terms of YouTube, yeah, it, it's a brilliant platform because it's evergreen as well. So a video videos we did you know two years ago are now getting loads more views because people are exploring the channel that's the benefit over twitter tiktok these sort of flash in the pan channels you know they, they might be there for i think i'm sure i read a stat somewhere that a tweet lasts seven minutes some, something like that same with instagram it's kind of there and it's gone uh blogging is an interesting one i would say that you can still get started in blogging if you've got a website content marketing is the way forward again though it can be a long slog it can take two years for articles to really rank but i guess the big unknown at the moment is with the introduction of ai and will we see the likes of google move towards more of an ai answering system rather than serving up results now that's dangerous for them because yeah. they rely on our blogs to give yeah. them information so they want to send us traffic otherwise we're going to stop writing so that's a that's a more of a bit of an unknown at the moment but i do think if you're a business, you've got a website, which pretty much every business does, having content on there that helps establish your authority isn't just good for search engines. It's great for when a customer finds you, whether that's through a recommendation, Google Maps, whatever. They can look at your site and go, yeah, this person knows about XYZ. I've read their articles. I like what they're saying. Let's get in touch with them. Yeah, interesting. So let's talk about YouTube. Like, How do someone can start in like a YouTube channel around their blog? uh like the business and how often do they have to create uh, like videos do you think or is the consistency is matters in terms of like ranking a high uh, what type of steps you need to follow in order to have a like successful youtube channel sure so i think there's a lot of 
myths and old knowledge out there that you know you look it up and people will say oh you've got to be posting every day or you've got to do this you've got to do that yeah. the first thing to, to remember is um if you find an expert telling you to do keyword research they're not an expert it's just it doesn't really it's not mm. a thing so you can set up a youtube channel in you know 30 minutes or less you can yeah. do it very easily on your phone on your on your computer on your laptop whatever you just need a google account uh set up the channel but before you do those steps, you really need to have to think about what the channel is going to be for. So if you do a channel that is a little bit random, so, uh, and it's funny this because I'm, I'm about to tell you about my channel, but I'm gonna say, don't do what I did. So when I got into YouTube, I didn't know any of this. And so my personal channel, one of them is a product review channel. And I've had 10 million views, but I've only got 15,000 subscribers. Now, the reason for that is that people view the review, but they're not interested in sticking with me because they just want to know about that particular thing. Yeah. So don't make a channel around products. Make it around um, solving a problem for your viewer. So you might make it around marketing advice, for example. Um, obviously, on YouTube, there's a lot of people giving YouTube advice. I've stayed away from that because I think the market's pretty saturated there. <laughs> uh, it, you, you know, and I'm I'm talking general stuff here, but you could go down and say, well, I'm going to be a uh, give carpenter carpentry advice, plumbing advice, mechanical advice, what whatever it is. Um, it needs to be something where you're solving the problem, and every video needs to offer a transformation. So that might sound a bit bit strange if you think about entertainment channels, but but if you think about someone like Mr. Beast, one of the biggest channels there is an, an amazing creator and great videos you could see his transformation as being well you weren't entertained and now you are entertained because of the things he does but for a business really it's about establishing that credibility and of course you can then take those videos and put them into your blog so if you're right. writing a blog on how to do xyz and you're really knowledgeable about this subject well make a video about it put it in the blog that then gives your blog a bit more authority and it makes it a little bit more unique because no one else will have necessarily made that video that you have. And in fact, because YouTube videos can be put into blogs, other people might put your video into their blog. So there's lots of different benefits, but I 100% would recommend giving it a go if you haven't. All you need is a mobile these days. Mobile phones are incredible. Um, mm. If you're wanting to write scripts, you can get teleprompter apps like Big View. And that will record you with a and show the show the script on screen, scrolling up. You say it out, it records it. You can just publish it to YouTube. You don't need to be particularly fancy. The important thing is the content. So don't worry about lighting. Don't worry about uh, you know 10k cameras or whatever the latest gadget is. It's all about the value you're delivering to the viewer. And if you can deliver that value, they'll go, oh, let's check out more videos. Let's hit subscribe. Yeah. And then when you hit the magic 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, you can start to earn a little bit of money from the YouTube um, monetization program. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. So we can both combine like YouTube and blog on the same time, right? Like wherever video is there, like you can put Yeah, 100%. Because it takes, it's, it's time factor, isn't it? You know, yeah. putting work into a blog takes time. Putting work into YouTube takes time. And, you know, YouTube in particular, there's a lot of people can get a bit hung up about making the start. I think maybe less so now that more people are used to Zoom calls. Yeah. So being on camera is perhaps less of a, a barrier. But certainly when I started back in whenever it was 2010, you know, the idea of putting myself on camera for a few years, I wasn't on camera. I was simply showing the product. And yeah. then one day I just went for it. And every, all the advice I give to people I work with now, they go, oh, I'm not sure how I look on camera. I'm just like, do you know what? Just get over it. Just do it. And, and trust me, by the time you've done four or five videos, it's the best advice I can give you. By the time you've done four or five videos, you'll be relaxed, you'll be getting into it, and it, it just won't be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, those first four or five videos, unless you get very lucky and get a load of views, it's unlikely people will see. You can just treat them as practice videos. You put them on, you start building up a bank of videos, yeah. but realistically, it's going to take a while for YouTube to understand what your channel is about. Um, now you can, you know, I have seen videos where people have been very successful in six months and that's where they've really done the work on figuring out the problems their ideal avatar wants to solve. And they've made a really good video, informative video with a good uh, thumbnail 
and a good title that catches people's attention. So it, it can be done much sooner than I've outlined, um, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of research before you record. Yeah, yeah. So like a, in blogging side, like is it similar to like a what doing on a YouTube or like if you have to do lots of research, creating? Yeah, again, it's, 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 well, again, you always start from the point of view of what's the blog about. You don't want it to be a general blog. You want it to be yeah. about something specific, which uh, if you're a business owner it's likely that's going to be an easy call because it'll be about whatever your business is about and most businesses are about something specific then you want to have a think again about who's it for what your um, problems you're solving what problems your business solves and then you need to think about right okay let's have a think what what the problem is and let's google it and let's see what comes up because if you remember google does this amazing thing where as you start typing it will yeah auto fill your suggestions and sort of say look is this what you're looking for and if it does that around your problem that means other people have been searching for those kind of results and so that's one of the basic ways you can start to look into what to blog about is just by having a look at what google auto suggests and also the people also ask section which comes up slightly further down the page when you do a, a search it will come up with a load of questions and you do a blog on all those kind of things and just make sure that you're blog is uh, the most feature packed information packed you know it's got all the goodness it doesn't have to be uh, long for being long sake it just needs to make sure it thoroughly answers whatever problem or question the uh, person is looking for yeah and as long as you keep on topic and you can demonstrate your authority so for example um, I couldn't write a medical blog because I have no uh, I'm, I'm not a doctor, I have no medical degree, no medical history. So Google will be like, well, mm, you shouldn't really be giving advice. But if I could demonstrate um, via, you, you have a little author box and you say, you know, so-and-so medical doctor at da, 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 your LinkedIn profile is all about being a medical doctor, then you could establish that credibility. And to a lesser extent, if your business is about, you know, um, marketing or whatever, then you want your own profile to reflect all these skills you have um, to give it the credibility you need to be considered to, to uh, rank. But it, it's, again, it's, um, it's a time sink. You've got to put time into it and then you've got to be very patient. So yeah. I was lucky with the um, property website I mentioned earlier. They've been going for 10 years. So the, the site itself, had already been established as a property investment website and they were experts on that. Mm -hmm. And so the articles I've published have ranked very quickly. If I was to start that on my own, it would take me a couple of years before I'd start to see any results. And yeah. that's the frustrating thing. With YouTube, it's a little bit more, um, it's, it can be a little bit quicker because you put the video out there and it, it, there's less of the whole, oh, are you a trusted sources, indexing, all that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, with your TikToks and Instagrams, yeah, they might disappear quick, but you get the instant gratification of someone hitting like. Yeah. But the way I look at it is your vanity metrics are people pressing like. What you really want is that to convert to something, a sale, a yeah, conversation, yeah. Yeah. you know, wh whatever it is, it, it's kind of irrelevant. I remember a, a story where there was a, um, I think she was on Instagram, she had you know, 10 million followers or something. She launched her own clothing brand and sold three items <laughs> because it was all vanity clicks and likes and things. There was no real substance there. So just because you've got the numbers means nothing until you try and convert that into some sort of um, yeah. monetary motion. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, Mark, thank you so much for sharing those valuable lessons and hope our business owners can implement those on their businesses and get some benefit from it. So those who are listening to our show, like if anyone wants to learn more about you, your work, where's the best place to find you? Yeah, so um, if you search Mark J. Draper, I should pop up in all sorts of places because I've been around a long time. Uh, if you want to contact me uh, in particular, I'll, I've got my own um, small website at the moment is Indigo, that's I I N digo.co.uk indigo.co.uk and i'm going to be launching another website which is growthjetpack.com and that's going to be for coaches consultants and entrepreneurs who uh, need help and guidance in creating these these products and of course anyone who comes on board with that can ask me anything they like about blogging and youtube and all that kind of stuff um and if you search my name in amazon on amazon.co.uk i think I, i'm still on there i've even got a little youtube book to help people get started with youtube uh, like a little blueprint manual where you fill out a load of forms and it helps you get set up okay 
Yeah, that's that's interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that. So, Mark, it's been a great pleasure having you on the show, and I have learned a few things from you as well. So, I wish you best of luck with your business and your personal life. I hope you have a wonderful year, and thanks for coming today. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, that was a pleasure is mine. So that's a, uh, that's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed it and got some value from it. Anyone interested to learn more about Mark, go reach out to him. And until then, I'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care.